Variety on Broadway, presented by City National Bank. Hi, Jeff. So Lila. happy to be talking to you. Oh, it's first, just... First time in front of four cameras. <laughs> so you directed Waverly Gallery I on did. Broadway. I did. Well, what was that experience like? Uh, I mean, you're, it was your first Broadway play directing debut thing. You were mostly off Broadway. That's correct. Where I started, yeah. I think the gift of it, and what felt kind of remarkable in part, um, is that the opportunity, I mean, first and foremost, just to do a play that I deeply love, but that is fundamentally an intimate, delicate portrait of a family, fundamentally decent people trying to be decent and take care of each other in the face of kind of insurmountable odds, um, a play that relies on the kind of steady accumulation of meticulous detail to achieve a larger effect, but that doesn't have kind of enormous fireworks. Um, to be able to handle that with care and delicacy, but on a larger stage, um, felt like a kind of remarkable opportunity, um, and to do it with a really spectacular company of you actors. You had Elaine May, Joan Allen, yeah. Lucas Hedges. Michael Sarah, and David Cromer were the rest yeah. of that cast. So it was a kind of astonishing group. It was um, deeply joyful. <laughs> How do you handle actors who come from different approaches? One has method, one is external. No two collaborations with two actors or two writers for me are ever identical. And to me, I feel like on some level my job fundamentally is to unlock an individual person's creativity and curiosity. Um, which is based on an investigation into who are they and how do they like to work. I do think the project of making a play has a lot to do with creating a culture in a room in which a group of people from different backgrounds can be a part of one conversation, which often involves some kind of toggling and oscillating between different people's needs. Mm. Um, uh, mm. <laughs> and I think that, well, that, that endeavor can And Broadway kind of heightens yeah. that, because brighter lights, Big marketing. More lights, just more lights. Bigger and stage, more lights. what's the lights. word I'm looking for? Yeah, yeah. Commercial. Yeah, yeah, right, there's, there's that. There's money, money invested. There's money. And people yeah, going, yeah. are yeah. we going to make yeah. our money sure. back? Sure, sure. All I mean, of that. Yes, I think that it would be somewhat irresponsible to not take into account the financial stakes of what you are taking on. And at the same time, I feel like my job is and was fundamentally the same, which is to support and protect the people in the production, support the integrity of the work, protect the play as I understand it. Um, and for me, one of the great pleasures of my job is figuring out with a given actor, um, you speak a particular language, and how are we? <laughs> He's already rolling his eyes, it's so good. I'm <laughs> you I'm, do, you sometimes speak different languages, Jeff. I, I'm do. yelling at Jeff Daniels we in do. my first conversation with him. We you do. do, and I'm actually interested in that. Like, I'm interested in how do we find a language together that makes sure that all of your needs get met and the needs of everybody else in this room gets met and that we are honoring the project of the play as we have collectively come to understand and imagine it together. You are currently still doing To Kill a Mockingbird mm -hmm. on Broadway. For a year. For a year. Mm -hmm. that, that can be an uncommon thing to sign on to do a play for a full year. What did you think about? <laughs> when you decided to take it on for a year. Aaron Sorkin came to me two years before opening night and said, would you like to play Atticus Finch? We got the rights and I'm gonna write it. I'm yeah. gonna uh, uh, write a play based on the book. And I said, of course. And I did three years, New Year's in newsroom with Aaron. So he, he and I really had developed this, I think, wonderful writer-actor relationship. You write, I'll act. And I never changed a word. Never asked to change a word. Not and once. It, no. Not once. Never changed a word. I have too much respect for, for Aaron, but that comes from the theater. I, it comes from, you know, I started out at Circle Repertory Company in the 70s with Marshall W. Mason and, and Lanford Wilson. I would never consider going to Lanford Wilson mm -hmm. and saying, uh, why don't you take another shot at this speech? You're six months in. How has the experience of living through the play evolved for you? You know, the stress is gone um, of getting to opening night. And Broadway is about that, more so than anywhere else, uh, because of the money. Mm -hmm. You can't ignore the fact there is a lot of money at stake. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get basically one week with the critics, not just opening night. They come for a week, as you know. And so that's your week. And you're either going to sink or swim on these, these people. And if you succeed with them, 
you're in for the greatest ride of your life. If you don't, it's slow death. There's, there really is no in between for me. And we got hosannas. So now we don't have to prove ourselves anymore. Now we can start to work on it and just live it and, and kind of become him. You want it to feel like it's the hundredth performance of the play. That's when you kind of know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So what number are you at now? We're almost 200. Okay. And, it, and, and you, you learn how to, uh, you make the decision whether you go on sick. You got people that bought their tickets five months ago. They drove in from where? Flew in from where? Mm -hmm. Got to go on. 200 shows in, X hundred shows in. How do you keep it alive for yourself? We have um, a great company in that. Um, if you look at me differently tonight, it'll come back differently. Hmm. And we have many actors who are willing to do that. It's a dangerous way to work. Um, I prefer it. I mean, I, I've lost a laugh on something that I'm going to get back tonight if it kills, you know, if it kills me. I'm just going, what happened? The precision of why did it work before yeah. is not working now. Yeah. And it can be this yeah. much uh -huh. of a thing where you look too quickly up there or you, and it always, always comes down to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Pull them on stage, mm -hmm. tell the truth, and you'll get everything back. I have, I have like no memory of doing the movies I did and the TV that I did. None at all. I, it's and it's it, all gone. There's a ridiculous <laughs> amount. But you're starting to get into that, the film and the TV thing. Yeah. Are you going to forget theater and, and go off and off you go and now you're the next big thing, see you at the Oscars? Or are you, are you going to return to the theater? How often do you see <laughs> yourself returning to the theater? Uh, uh. I, I can't imagine a version of my life that does not continue to involve the theater. I can't imagine it. And it is my hope. Do you hope. have a company? I do. I have a company that I make work with. Um, but it is my hope that um, uh, it will be possible to have a life for myself that can involve a kind of healthy ecology of creative endeavors in multiple mediums. I, I am about to make my first film. Um, I, uh, I can't imagine that every moment of the last 12 years of my life working in the theater won't be with me oh, it <laughs> in a meaningful everything. way You're in way that ahead. context. You're way ahead. Well, that's very kind. You're way ahead. I have a lot to learn, and in some ways it seems like scheduling is the most difficult aspect well, of that. that. We'll find out. <laughs> we'll Post-production is the yeah, main yeah. wake-up call. It cold. seems to take some time. Oh. I'm, I'm being told, <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, it looks like it's, there's going to be many months of my life that mm. now belong to this project. Mm. Yeah, that's revealing itself to me in real time. Waverly Gallery <laughs> was previously done, but you do a lot of new work. What was the difference? I have done... I have primarily directed new plays and also some revivals, but in other cases, the revivals, see if this is accurate, yes, the playwrights were either deceased or not present. And in this case, I was doing a revival with a living writer there in the room with me. Um, it's an interesting thing to do a revival of a play that is, that is only 20 years old. Um, because it was a revival, I think um, Kenny was tremendously gracious and magnanimous in the way that he gave us the space to make our version of the play, um, which again, I think conveniently was um, aligned with his version of the play. <laughs> Lucky for you. Yeah, 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 as one, as one hopes. <laughs> I'm so happy to have had this chance to talk to you. <laughs> have a good show tonight. That's right. Yeah, you gotta go do that play. Yeah, I gotta. Yeah. Uh -huh. I get, what's my first, yeah, I'm okay. I know you the know first, your first line. line. I'm okay. Good, you'll be fine from there, I think.